Right, this morning I've come down to have a little look for a roebuck. There's been one or two around here. So um, it's a nice morning. Woke up early, thought why not? Just come down to this first field here. A few geese are just laying out in the field. So uh, that's one for a, for another morning when I've got something a little bit more um, appropriate to, to deal with them with. Today I've got 243 with me. So this is the Mauser M12, shooting um, 75 grain. Uh, I think it's a Norma's if I remember right. Yeah, Norma ammo. Seems to shoot quite nicely in this. So we're uh, quickly bung a few rounds in the mag. Have a little look around. We've got an Element uh, Helix on there. Nice scopes these. It's the HDLR, it's one of the newer ones. So there's a couple of nice little blocks of wood on this farm. There's one just over here and another back over by the farm itself. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk around the open fields first just to see if there's any row out feed in there. And if not, then I'll probably go and have a look through that bigger wood first. Maybe if I've got time, I'll have a look in the other one as well. Well, so, not a roebuck, but um, a fox. I was quite surprised actually to have got that close to it in this in this woodland. But it just goes to show sneaking through quietly pays off. Um, that fox was about 30 yards from me. <laughs> it was pretty close. Unfortunately, I just played it back on the uh, little pard and um, for some reason it decided to stop recording just before the shot. But... Um, such is life, modern technology and all that. I don't know what caused it to do that, but uh, anyway, Fox has dropped on the spot as you'd expect from a 30 yard shot with a 243. So um, let's go and pick it up. Well, there he is, one dead fox, dog fox. Quite a lump of an animal, it's quite heavy. I'm very dead. Well, 
well that's pretty cool to see. That's a grey spoiled woodpecker there feeding its little ones. So hopefully my little squirrel cull in this wood over the past sort of year to 18 months has gone some way to helping birds like that to flourish. Well, we didn't have an awful lot of luck with the uh, row the other day, so we did get fox though. So uh, anyway, I'm back out this evening for uh, another look, this time for foxes. I'll probably shoot a row deer, but <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, some on a nice open bit of ground, so you can probably hear the sheep and cattle all around me. But this bank has been particularly, uh, particularly lively lately with foxes. The farmer said that he's seen a, uh, a litter of foxes on this bank so it's just starting to get dark now so I've sat out here I've got the 260 with me to get the best of the last of the uh, light and I've also got the Mauser M12 there fitted out with the infrared TH50 V2 so we've got all the gear no idea <laughs> right well we'll just have a, a little look see and I would think before long the cubs will probably get bored and be venturing out So we play the waiting game. I've got the Pulsar Thermal here with me. This is, or the, well, these are the uh, mergers, and they're nice and clear, good for this sort of thing. Not a cheap bit of kit, but a very good bit of kit. So you'll notice how I'm alternating between thermal and just normal pair of binoculars these are a pair of Leica Geovids and uh, so I'm just spotting any sort of biggish heat sources with these and then going over to the binoculars just to confirm what it is oh now that's a fox I know I just wonder if you called that for you that looks like a Right, so we've got fox going up the edge of the cover there. Yep, yeah, right. 403. there. I thought I'd missed that at first, it obviously must have drilled straight through that. Well, I was pretty lucky there. I missed that fox with the first shot. He was out at uh, 410 metres and I don't know if the wind just took it a little bit. I didn't really have an awful lot of time to kind of really thing what I was doing there, I just spotted him and had to get a quick shot before he went into cover. But anyway, I just shot at him, just missed him, I see the dirt kick up and uh, he ran and he ran across this bank and he started dropping down back uh, onto the onto the, the more greener sort of covered bit of bank here and uh, luckily he stopped, stood broadside and I had a quick uh, quick look with the rangefinder and he was 360 something, 368 uh, metres away quickly just adjusted my dope on the scope there and uh, took another shot and I thought I'd missed him a second time because I see the dust come up just like looked like it was all around him and I saw him run and I lost sight of him so I quickly had a quick look through the thermal and I saw him just above the bush just laying there dead in the field so he probably only went another 30 or 40 yards to the right and then just went over so Good, I'm glad I got that one with the second shot anyway, I'd have been pretty pretty peed if I missed it twice. So, great start to the evening. He 
we go. We've got a couple of foxes out here. Yeah, definitely foxes. All right. Well, that's certainly, certainly not that one down. So that, uh, that second fox there, he just sat there, perfect for that. That was a youngster. There was two or three, I think, actually, out there. And he just sat nice. The other two were, were here, there and everywhere. But he just sat still for a little bit. And um, I managed to quickly range him and get shot. And he was... Uh, was he just, he was about 330, well he was 300 yards, so around about 330 metres, uh, sorry, he was 300 metres, so around about 330 yards. And um, by the looks of it, that hit him straight in the neck or possibly the head and he just went straight down. So, uh, good, well the light's starting to fade now, so I think what I'll actually do is I'm going to put the 260 away and go over to the males of there with the uh, night scope on it. So it's that time of year when you get those, uh, I forget what they're called, but them big flying beetle things that just have to fly into your face. It sounds like they're coming at you with a with a lightsaber or something. But uh, as soon as it gets dark, they'll, they'll disappear. So, But for now, there's a few buzzing around. Alright, so we've gone over to the uh, 243, the Mauser M12. As you can see, got a sat there. Kit out with the tube TH50 version 2. It's a bit of a stretch because um, I, I haven't really worked out the ballistics properly for that rifle, so uh, I'll just be going with a bit of holdover on that. So it's a little bit of a stretch over onto that bank. So uh, if something comes out in the near future, then um, I might have to uh, I might have to try and get a bit closer. Okay, we've got cubs back out. He went down lovely. That's three cubs down now and an adult. So we had the adult just before it got dark. And then we just as it was getting dark, we had one of the cubs. Just had two more there. Uh, I think there's still I think there's still foxes about on this bank.
here we go, we've got another one. This one looks like an adult too. went straight down that was about well I ranged that at 300 meters or just over 300 meters so that would have been about 330 yards and that one's gone straight down as well that one uh, I was I was uh, watching it for ages it was working its way through the cover I tracked it and tracked it and tracked it eventually come out out into the open a bit more and uh, I didn't think it was going to stop and it just stopped long enough broadside wallop straight over so these cows are now starting to get a, a bit of a pain so uh, I think I'm gonna call it a night before I get trampled to death but um, thanks for watching and uh, don't forget to subscribe <laughs>